Homo sapiens. Who are we? Where do we come from? In chapter 11, we will seek to gain a greater understanding of the evolution of Homo sapiens by taking a more detailed look at Homo neanderthalensis. This will set the stage for an overview of the interactions between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens as Homo sapiens expanded out of Africa into the Levant, moving northward into Europe. As we noted in chapter 10, both Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis had evolved out of the Homo heidelbergensis population that stretched from northern Europe down into southern Africa. The time frame of the diversification of the heidelbergensis population into Neanderthals and Homo sapiens is roughly from 800,000 years ago to around 200,000 years ago. There is some debate in the scientific community as to the time frame of the diversification. Various genetic studies as well as archaeological evidence point to different time frames. One study puts the divergence of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens at about 516,000 years ago. Another pushes the divergence back to 800,000 years ago. Archaeological evidence seems to favor a time frame of around 400,000 years ago. The consensus seems to put a clear separation between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens by the 200,000 year mark. Another recently discovered human ancestor that we will add to this mix is the Denisovans. The Denisovans are thought to be an offshoot of the Neanderthals, diverging from the Neanderthal line roughly 640,000 years ago by some accounts. The Denisovan discovery is important because it gives insight into the diversification of the gene pool of the genus Homo. If we look at this chart of the evolution of the genus Homo over the last two million years, we can get a general idea of how it seems to have unfolded according to current theory. As this is a very dynamic and complex area of current anthropological theory, it's hard to pin down absolutes. We will use this as a general guide. Let's now start a more in-depth look at the Neanderthals. Using some of the major excavation sites of Neanderthal remains, we can plot out a general range of Neanderthal habitation. The most northwesterly site is in Wales in Great Britain. We then have a number of sites sprinkled across Europe into the Middle East and into Western Asia, ranging across 22 countries including France, Germany, Italy, Israel, Iraq, Iran, Uzbekistan, and Afghanistan. The most easterly site being the Okladnikova Cave in the Altai Krai district of Siberia in south central Russia. An interesting note on the Okladnikova Cave is that it lies about 36 miles from the Denisova Cave where evidence of the Denisovans was discovered. The time range of these Neanderthal sites is from roughly 230,000 years ago to around 30,000 years ago. No homo fossils older than 400,000 years have been found that display Neanderthal features. To date, the bones of over 400 Neanderthal individuals have been found across this range. Besides the actual physical remains of Neanderthals, archaeologists can use cultural artifacts to help in identifying the inhabitants of a particular site. One of the earliest cultural artifacts to occur in association with human evolution is the technological use of stone as a material in making tools. The earliest stone tool industry began with Homo habilis or possibly Australopithecus gari and is called the Oldowan industry. The Oldowan industry was largely crude chopping tools. The next advance in stone tool making came with the rise of Homo erectus or gaster. The stone tool industry associated with Homo erectus was called the Achillean industry. It was characterized by more complex stone working with biface tools exemplified by the classic Achillean hand axe. In Europe, the Achillean industry was gradually replaced by the Mousterian industry which arose with the Neanderthals around the 200,000 year mark. The Mousterian industry is marked by more complex and varied tools. Homo sapiens also made stone tools characteristic of the Mousterian industry, especially in the areas of the Middle East and North Africa where Neanderthals and Homo sapiens would have lived in close proximity. Thus, stone tools in the tradition of the Mousterian industry can be helpful in identifying Neanderthal habitation sites. In comparing Neanderthals to Homo sapiens, the following characteristics would stand out. Neanderthals were stocky and heavily muscled. They were much stronger than Homo sapiens, especially in the arms and hands. Males probably averaged around 65 inches or 165 centimeters in height. Females averaged around 61 inches or 155 centimeters in height. Males weighed on average 170 pounds or 77 kilograms. 
Females weighed on average about 146 pounds or 66 kilograms. Neanderthals were largely carnivores hunting big game animals such as reindeer, red deer, horses, chamois, aurochs, bison, woolly rhinos, and mammoths. Recent discoveries from research at the El Cedrone Neanderthal site in northern Spain point to Neanderthals also having cooked vegetables in their diet. The researchers used thermal desorption and pyrolysis gas chromatography mass spectrometry to identify chemical evidence in Neanderthal dental remains consistent with wood smoke and a variety of starchy plant residue. Research from El Cedrone also indicates that Neanderthals may have had a knowledge of and used medicinal plants such as yarrow and chamomile for various ills. Neanderthals lived across an area of harsh climatic challenges. Their survival depended on being adept in using the resources at hand, be they animal or plant. In brain size, Neanderthals were equivalent to Homo sapiens and possibly even a bit bigger. Some theorize that the extra brain size in Neanderthals may have gone to control with their large muscle mass. Whether Neanderthals had the capacity for complex speech or language is still under debate in anthropological circles. Those who favor the possibility of Neanderthal speech point to two main clues. The first being the 1982 discovery of the most complete Neanderthal skeleton found to date at the Kabara cave in Israel. The important aspect of the Kabara skeleton was the finding of a Neanderthal hyoid bone which was almost identical to the hyoid bone of modern humans. The hyoid bone lies between the root of the tongue and the larynx. The close similarity between the hyoid bone of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens seems to indicate that the Neanderthal larynx was very similar to humans. The second clue comes from genetics. In humans, the FOXP2 gene is associated with the capacity for speech. Our closest living relative, the chimpanzee, has the same FOXP2 gene but the human FOXP2 gene varies from the chimp FOXP2 gene in two places in the genetic code. When the Neanderthal FOXP2 gene was sequenced, it was shown to have the same two genetic variations as the human FOXP2 gene. Proponents of Neanderthal speech point to this genetic similarity with Homo sapiens as another indicator of Neanderthals being capable of speech. Another fundamental aspect of language is the ability to think symbolically or abstractly. Some anthropologists point to the fact that Neanderthals used body paint and created body ornaments such as beads as evidence that Neanderthals had the capacity for symbolic thought. Physiology, genetics, and archaeology seem to point to the possibility that Neanderthals were capable of speech, but as of now, whether Neanderthals had a language and could speak is still a mystery. Another finding coming out of the work on the Neanderthal genome comes from discoveries about the MC1R gene. The MC1R gene is involved in hair and skin color in humans and other mammals. The MC1R gene sequence from two Neanderthals, one from Spain and one from Italy, showed that these two individuals probably had red hair and light colored skin, possibly with freckles. This points to the probability that populations of Neanderthals varied in skin and hair color, just as populations of humans today. Another aspect of Neanderthals that is interesting and points to lifestyle influences is that there was as much as a 50% or greater asymmetry between a Neanderthal's right and left arms in strength. In modern humans, you might find a 4 to 13% asymmetry due to greater use of one arm over the other in daily tasks that build muscle strength. It is speculated that the greater Neanderthal asymmetry was due to long hours scraping and preparing the skins of large animals for use in clothing and shelters. Wear and tear found on the front teeth of Neanderthals points to Neanderthals using their teeth like a vice or third hand in daily tasks, such as working on animal skins. In general, the robust Neanderthals lived a very strenuous life. The study of their bones seems to indicate a high frequency of fractures and injury possibly due to a close quarter hunting style when engaging large mammals. The fractures also show signs of healing which seems to indicate that the Neanderthals cared for and looked after their injured. Most Neanderthals rarely live past the age of 35, with the majority dying between the ages of 15 and 30. The position of grandparent was seldom filled. Evidence from Neanderthal sites such as Kafsa in Israel, Rock de Mosal in France, and Simon de las Palomas in southeastern Spain seems to support the theory that Neanderthals buried their dead. What these apparent burials may indicate about Neanderthal beliefs or intentions is under debate in anthropological circles. Neanderthals are estimated to have lived in family groups ranging from 8 to 12 individuals. 
Several family groups may have come together for short periods of time for various purposes. These temporary gatherings may have been for sharing food or exchanging daughters for the purpose of marriage outside the immediate family group, a practice known as patrilocality. An intriguing Neanderthal site in northern Spain located in the Principality of Asturias near the municipality of Polonia in a cave called El Cedron gives us some great insight into one Neanderthal family group's life and death. The Neanderthal remains at the site have been dated to roughly 49,000 years ago. The remains of at least 12 individuals have been recovered from the El Cedron site so far. Research and DNA testing seems to indicate the group was composed of three adult males, three adult females, three teenage males, two young children ages about eight and five years, and one infant. Mitochondrial DNA testing points to the three adult males being brothers or matrilineally related. The three females were from different kin groups indicating marriage outside their family group. This seems to support the theory of patrilocality among the Neanderthals. The El Cedron site may harbor a horrific tale. It is theorized that all 12 individuals were murdered and then cannibalized by another group of Neanderthals. Cut marks on the bones indicate that muscle was cut from the bones. The long bones seem to have been broken open for the marrow. The attack is thought to have occurred just outside the cave. Shortly after the attack and gruesome feast, a violent storm or natural event seems to have led to the collapse of the group's remains into the cave where they were preserved till their discovery in 1994. If the cannibal theory is proven correct, it may speak to a savage act that transcends mere survival, pushing into some kind of warfare or act of unusual brutality. Continuing research at the El Cedron site will hopefully shed more light on what took place there some 49,000 years in the past. The Neanderthals lived a rugged and at times brutal life. Their total population across their vast range was relatively small. It is estimated that their number may have peaked at around 70,000. During the brutal cold periods, it may have shrunk to much less as food sources became scarce. Studies of Neanderthal teeth show stresses from an ongoing struggle with nutritional deprivation. Studies of Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA show a low level of diversity, which may also point to low population densities. The Neanderthals dominated their range across Eurasia from Spain into western Siberia from about 250,000 years ago to around 35,000 years ago. In the time frame of roughly 40,000 to 35,000 years ago, the Neanderthals began to see the incursion of Homo sapiens or early modern humans into their home range. The early modern humans are also referred to informally as the Cro-Magnon people. The preferred scientific term is European early modern humans. I'll use modern humans for the sake of brevity. The oldest verified bones of modern humans in Europe were found in southwestern Romania in 2003 in a cave named Pestera Cuase. The bones were dated to around 38,000 years ago. There is also some evidence from modern humans in Europe dating back to about 43,000 years ago from the Grata del Cavallo in southern Italy. No evidence for Neanderthal remains younger than 30,000 years ago has been found in Europe. There is some evidence from Gibraltar of possible fire use by Neanderthals that is dated to around 24,000 years ago. The Pestera Cuase findings and the lack of Neanderthal remains younger than 30,000 years ago seem to point to the demise of the Neanderthals over the period from 40,000 years ago to 30,000 years ago with the possibility of isolated pockets in the Iberian Peninsula till about 24,000 years ago, a roughly 10,000 year span from dominance to extinction. What were the interactions of Neanderthals with modern humans? Did they interbreed? And what role did the Denisovans play in the evolution of modern humans? In Chapter 12, we will continue our investigation into the demise of the Neanderthals and the spread of modern humans into Eurasia. <laughs>